Ready or not, I've heard a lot of good things about this movie, so let's get right into it. Movie review, movie review, movie review, review, fuck you. So, at midnight, you have to play a game. Why? It's just something we do when someone new joins the family. A game. What game? Ready or Not centers around the character of Grace, who is marrying into the Le Domas gaming family. And before she could be fully accepted into the family, she needs to play a life and death game of hide and seek. This movie really felt like they took the best parts of Clue and another movie called Your Next and blended them together. And the end result was... Okay. Now, don't get me wrong, I still thought the film was enjoyable and I still kind of liked it. But overall, I just think the film was alright. Like, there was nothing really bad about it, but there was nothing that really stood out either. And I don't know, maybe that was just a product of my friends and my coworkers really hyping up this movie. Then they kept telling me, no, DJ, DJ, you gotta see this, you gotta see this. And you know, maybe I blew up the expectations a little too much in my head of what I thought the movie was gonna be or what I thought it should be. So, you know, when I sat down and watched it, yeah, I liked it, I had fun with it, but I really wasn't floored or blown away by it. But I do actually really love the premise of this movie. I love the idea of this chick that's marrying into this ultra-rich gaming empire of a family. And, you know, like I said before, it's, in order to be accepted, she has to play this life and death game of hide and seek. And, you know, that's such a fun premise for a movie like this that I thought they would really take advantage of that and really go balls to the wall and ramp up the violence and ramp up the humor. But I don't think this movie went as over the top as it could have and probably should have. I think that kind of is my overall disappointment in this movie. I was really expecting that sort of Robert Rodriguez like over the top level of just gore and violence and dark humor. The movie was funny. There were some funny moments in there, especially from the character of Mitch, but I feel like those humor moments were really too far in between. Again, it just wasn't to the level that I thought it could have been and should have been, much like the level of violence. Well, at least not until the very end, but we'll get to that in a minute. I also felt like the pacing of this movie was really tediously slow. I know it's only a 90 minute movie, but at one point in the theater, I was actually checking my phone to check the time because it felt like this was running longer than what they actually had it listed for. Especially coming off of a movie like It Chapter 2, where that was damn near three hours, but it was paced so well that it didn't really feel like three hours spent in a movie theater. This, for only being 90 minutes, kind of felt like a slog to sit through at times. If we don't find her and perform the ritual, we're all dead. Found her. Now I got my chief complaints out of the way. Like I said, it's not all bad. I really still did enjoy this movie. I thought Samara Weaving was fucking fantastic. And holy shit, does she go through fucking hell in this movie. And she's just a character that you get invested in right from the jump. The way she plays the role, she plays it very down to earth, very real. I just felt for her through this whole movie. And once again, I'll mention Mitch because I thought he was very funny, but in a very sort of smarmy and sardonic kind of way. And like I said earlier, there was some good humor sprinkled in throughout this thing as well. But the ending is what single-handedly saved this movie for me. Because if this movie didn't end the way that it ended, Christ, I probably would have hated this thing. But this is a little bit spoilerific, so if you haven't seen the movie yet, or if you plan on seeing it, you can skip to the end. If you've even made it this far in the review, I'll put the time code to skip to here. All right, fuckers, you were warned. Essentially what the gist of this movie is is that this Le Doma family sell their soul to the devil in order to have the gaming riches that they do, or something like the devil. He goes by the name of Mr. LaBelle in the movie. And in order to appease Mr. LaBelle, they have to play a game each time somebody new marries into the family 
so that person can kind of prove their worth or something thereabouts. Now there's seven games that they have to play and one of them is the deadly hide and seek game which Grace ends up pulling. So when the person gets found, in this case Grace, they have to be sacrificed to the devil in order for them to keep their family riches and in order for them to keep from exploding essentially. Oh, and I forgot, they have to accomplish all this between the hours of midnight and dawn. So when the sun starts coming up, if they haven't sacrificed this person, then they're essentially fucked. So we get to the end of this movie. They do have Grace captured. They have her like on this sort of pentagram demonic altar, but it's too late and the sun starts coming out and they justly start freaking out because they're about to die but nothing happens. For a brief minute, they think that maybe this was all sort of bullshit, and then one by one, the family members start exploding. Holy shit, I just thought it was hilarious. The way it happens in the movie when they all start exploding is, is fucking great, because they're all like sort of like, you know, they're panicky, they're freaking out, and like the dad's freaking out, uh, saying he's the only one that played the game correctly, so he should be spared. Boom, explode. Everybody, one by one, boom, explodes, boom, explodes. And by the end, Samara Weaving's character is just like laughing in hysterics as she's just covered in blood. It was an ending that was really fucking perfect, but I think had it actually ended with nothing happening, and this family went through years and years and generations of doing this heinous shit all for nothing, would have been a more darker and funnier ending in my opinion. The exploding thing was was great, it was a nice twist, especially because they do kind of play with it that you don't think it's gonna happen, but then it actually does. But I do kind of wish the movie would have ended with nothing happening, and then this family's just left there with, oh fuck, what have we been doing for the past like 100 years? This is really fucked up. And even Mitch at one point looks at the dad and says, man, I knew this was all bullshit. I really think it would have been a funny sort of awkward way to end that movie with the family just looking at Grace and essentially being like, oh shit, we're sorry, our bad. But for the wing scale, I'm giving this movie a medium. Ready or Not is a film where the execution doesn't fully live up to the idea. Sometimes funny and chaotic, with an excellent turn from Samara Weaving, but mostly slow and tedious, taking its time to really get to the point of it all. But it is nonetheless still an entertaining ride, and it's a film I'll probably eventually add to my library one day. But whether it was because of the hype or my own expectations, Ready or Not just didn't tick all the boxes for me. But that was Ready or Not, as reviewed by yours truly. What did you guys think of the movie? If you have seen it, post your comments below. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. Adios, and GTFO.